How's it going, everybody? Do you have one of these X6100s and have dreams of getting on the radio with digital modes? Well, I'm going to show you how to set it up. It's actually pretty straightforward, but there are a couple little tips and tricks that I learned in setting this up for the first time that I'm going to tell you about right now. Okay, so grab your laptop or your computer, just plug the radio in. You are going to be using the dev port. That's right, don't use the host port, that's for upgrading the firmware. You're gonna use the dev port on the radio, that USB-C port. Now that you've got your USB connected, you should bring up your Windows device manager. If you're using a Mac or Linux, you're gonna to have to go about this another way, but you basically want to do a query. You can do an LS on the USB ports for Mac, you can do a very similar thing with Linux, but I'm talking through Windows right now since most of you are using Windows. Bring up Device Manager and go to your ports setting. You should see two new ports, and in fact, if you wanted to show this the best way possible, unplug your radio and plug it back in. Um, I'll try and link to drivers. A lot of you won't have the problem of needing driver drivers, but some of you will, and uh, I will also link to those drivers. You need to have those installed if you are having a problem seeing the ports when you plug the radio in. But what should happen when you're looking at that ports window folded open like that, plug the port into the computer and you should see two new ports appear. They're gonna be the same name, but one will be a less number port and the other will be a higher number port. It will vary on your computer and which port you're using. So now that you see the device port showing up on your computer, meaning it acknowledges it, it being a thing, you're gonna start up WSJTX. Now the settings that I'm gonna show here on the over screen, on the B-roll, whatever you wanna call it, that is gonna be the same settings likely that you're gonna to have to use for things like JSA call, um, if you use FL rig or FL digi, the same kind of port settings or physical settings for the radio. So just screenshot this or pause it at this point and you're gonna be able to see the what it should look like on the menu, but I'm gonna talk through it. The rig type, when you go to settings under radio for WSJTX is going to be the Shagu X108G. That is a ham lib configuration. It is not fully utilizing, at least this is my uh, belief, my opinion, it's not fully utilizing the capability of the 6100. So just keep in mind that this works, but it's likely gonna get better or the Shegu itself is gonna get its own setting in Hamlib, which will then make use of the settings that I'm gonna get to in a second. Next, you're gonna select your COM port. Again, mine is COM11. You're gonna use the higher of the two ports from the COM port list, at least that's been my experience. You're gonna leave data bits to default, stop bits to default, handshaking to default, basically everything default. On the PTT method, you're gonna select cat because you do want the application in your computer to turn on the PTT or activate the PTT for the radio and also set the frequency. Under mode, this one I've tried it multiple ways and this is one of the things I think may be wrong with the Hamlim configuration by using the 108G rig type. You can use none, USB, or data and packet. And there is an order of the madness here that I need to explain. The next one, split operation, leave it to none, okay? So I generally will use data packet in the mode or USB in the mode. So with everything connected, the radio is on. Hopefully you had the wherewithal to put the mode into USB or USB dig, but don't worry, I'll get to that in a second. You're gonna hit test cat. Now, after you do that, stand up, walk away. <laughs> just go away for a while, because I don't know what's happening. It takes a long time for your computer or the radio to talk appropriately. When you come back after five minutes or so, it will turn green, that test cat button. Once that happens, you can click test PTT. The PTT on the radio should light up. You should see the red light and you should be good to go. Now, don't be scared that because it took so long to set up the cat control that the radio will function sluggishly like it did with the G90 back when we first started playing around with digital with that. Not at all, this actually works just fine. Now that you've done that, you can go to the audio tab, which is right next to radio, and you're gonna set it to USB audio device microphone and speaker. So you're gonna click the drop down. you'll see microphone parentheses, some number, USB audio device, and output, you're gonna put speakers, USB audio device. You may have multiple USB audio devices connected to your computer at any particular time. So you can do the same game by unplugging and replugging in in device manager and watch the devices that disappear and come back. 
Those are the radio devices that you need to use for the speaker and the microphone. You have to have both sides for you to be able to receive, decode, and then transmit FT8 digital signals or whatever digital signals you are trying to use, like Winlink. Now, once that's all working, you can click OK. If the waterfall begins to populate with little squares that kind of look like FT8, if you've watched my video or other videos, then you're most of the way there. So congratulations. If for some reason on the lower left-hand screen of WSJTX, that volume slider that goes zero to 80-ish is showing red, then that means the input volume so the in coming into the radio or the output volume of your computer is too loud. You can adjust this in two ways, using Windows settings to lower the output of that speaker, that volume, or on the X6100, you can use the radio menu one option to decrease the incoming audio for the input jack. That should always be in the green, that way you're getting a nice clear decode and you won't have a problem. Now, once you've got that sorted out in your decoding messages, click the tune button on the far right side and look at your ALC on the 6100. It's the small bar that's kind of down and to the right of your power output. If you see that going above two, you should take the power slider on the lower right hand side of WJTX and just lower it down until you see that ALC kind of just above the zero point, right? Just licking maybe midway between the zero and the one. Now at that point, you're pretty much done. You should watch my video on my top five or six tips that I have for being effective in using WSJTX and FT8. But I will leave you with a bit of a caveat, and this again may be due to the Hamlib configuration for the X6100. I have found that before I undertake all of this in connecting the computer to the radio, I must have everything disconnected and I must put the radio in either USB mode or USB DIG. If you're on 40 meters, for instance, the radio will want to jump to lower sideband. And if you start WSJTX in lower sideband mode, it's going to take control, switch it over to USB at, when it's transmitting, and then it'll switch back and forth between USB and lower sideband and back and forth, upper sideband, lower sideband, right? So the, the trick here is before you connect the computer to the radio and start your applications, make sure you are in upper sideband mode or upper sideband DIG. Once you do that, you're pretty good to go. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you uh, set up digital modes on your X6100. I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions or issues, and maybe I screwed something up, post them below. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful though, I would appreciate it. And if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe now. I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you later, 73.